Hi, my name is Jeff Marks and uh, thanks for coming along on this process. In this video I'm going to be designing and building what I'm calling a closed tree. And what you see me doing here is working through my preliminary design process. Um, looking for forms sort of inspired by the shapes of trees uh, and at the end of the process I want the end product to remind me of a tree. So I'm just trying to get a general concept here and then I'm going to move on to creating patterns from which I'm going to make the final product. So here I am cutting out some of the beginning patterns, uh, rough them on the bandsaw, and then get them real nice and smooth and fair. Uh, they're going to be pattern routed, so any mistakes in the surfaces are going to be translated to the final product. So it's important to take your time at this stage. There's one of the foot assemblies. Here I am getting it nice and smooth on the, on the sander. Next step, I'm breaking down my rough lumber. So I've got some beautiful eight quarter cherry here that I'm using for this project. I was lucky enough that this material is pretty flat, so I was able to skip plane it. Like I didn't have to run it across the joiner first. So running it through the planer, I'm gonna end up with nice flat uh, parallel surfaces and all the material being of the same thickness before I move on to the next steps. Now I'm taking my templates and I'm roughing them out, uh, tracing them just with a big sharpie and trying to make maximum use of this lumber here and I'm going to follow these over onto the bandsaw and on the bandsaw I try to cut within about an eighth or maybe a sixteenth of an inch of the line. It's important to leave as little material behind as possible so that we're taking off just whispers of material when we get to the pattern routing stage. You can end up with a much better surface as well as a safer process uh, doing it that way. So here are all my rough sawn parts for two closed trees. I'm going to next use double stick tape to put the templates directly onto the part and use the pattern routing bit that you can see there with the bearing on the bottom that rubs and runs against the template. It's important to stay far away from the bit when pattern routing and avoid going against the grain direction as you can get tear out or it'll grab and try to throw the wood. Now over the table saw I'm cutting the first half of the half lap joint for the foot or base assembly, sort of the roots of the tree, if you will. Uh, the other half is going to be cut next at the bandsaw. After cutting on the bandsaw, there's a fair amount of work in cleaning up by hand uh, with a chisel and then just back and forth carefully making sure I get a really nice snug fit to the joint. After lots of test fits and adjustments, here uh, is the final fit. Um, using just the magic hand hammer, I get that nice and tight. Uh, you can lift it up and it'll hold together on its own without any glue at this point. Here I am gluing up the foot assembly. I've got some nice long grain to long grain contact surface, so this is going to be a real good strong joint. Uh, I would recommend you spend some time practicing with your glue spreader stick so you try to get the correct end of it in your mouth each time. So I'm using domino joinery to connect the uprights to the base. You could certainly use uh, mortise and tendon or some other type of strong enough joinery if you didn't have access to a domino. So here I'm first doing the uprights and now uh, putting the dominoes into uh, the mating sides of the foot assemblies. Back at the table saw I'm now cutting the half laps for the arms. Um, this is going to look a lot like we did for the, the base assembly. With one difference, uh, I did decide to use a screw through the back 
like used in chair making to make sure I, I got enough strength in this joint. So first half on the table saw, and then again uh, on the arm itself, cutting these out, starting on the bandsaw as close as possible, and then a fair amount of handwork with the chisel at the bench. Now to attach the front arms or branches, if you will, I just decided to use one big uh, domino uh, mortise and tenon joint. There's only going to be a couple articles of clothing hanging on there, so I think this is going to be plenty strong. The reason I chose to do this at this point, as you'll see in a second, uh, I could then use a round over bit and round, out, round over both the uprights and those arms uh, simultaneously all in one step. The leg and foot assemblies get a pass uh, at the roundover bit prior to assembly. Like most projects, there was lots of sanding here. So here, uh, with the orbital, I'm paying attention to getting really nice, smooth curves and having the curves come together in the roundovers. And the whole project got sanded to 320 grit to prepare it for finish at the end. So I decided to use epoxy to glue the uprights to the base. And the reason for that is I had to do some work to flatten out the tops of the base or root units. Um, and then I did that with epoxy and the wood glue won't really attach it all that well. Also it gave me a little bit more working time at this stage. I had these two uh, mortises to do. I wanted to make sure I got really good glue coverage on both surfaces because uh, this joint has to be strong. So I've got two 10 by 100 millimeter dominoes here glued together with epoxy. I think this is going to hold up for a long, long time. You'll see when I bring the joint together, uh, I've got wax paper underneath to protect the top of my workbench. And I've also got blue tape there that I use to create uh, sort of a dam, if you will, from up underneath to keep this low viscosity epoxy from flowing out and to keep it all within the joint. I just sort of added more as I needed as it's sunk down in. After at least 24 hours for the epoxy, I'm now gluing on the arm units. So getting good coating of glue on all the mating surfaces of these half laps. So the arms themselves were pre-drilled for screws that you're going to see me put in. And I made plugs out of matching cherry material. So in a second when I go to put those plugs in after the screws in place, it's important to sort of pay attention and try to match the grain direction of those plugs so that once they're flat sawn down flush and then sanded over, uh, they very nearly disappear uh, into the remainder of the work. For finish, I use a natural Danish oil. The, uh, this is always one of my favorite parts of every project because you get to see the wood really sort of come to life as some of the finish starts to go onto it. So with the Danish oil, just flood the surface, uh, let it soak in for 10 or maybe 12 minutes, wipe off the excess, and after three or four coats, this is the result. So these are the final two units. Uh, I'm really pleased with how they turned out. They're super sturdy. Um, I think they're attractive and they remind me of trees. So I think I accomplished all of my design goals in this project. So here we are at the end, getting to put the closed trees to work. Uh, clearing up all the clutter of uh, used clothes that aren't ready to be washed yet from my dresser and uh, makes a big, big difference in the, the aesthetic of the room. Obviously happy with the result. On to the next project, and I appreciate you watching. Thanks a bunch.